Paul and I felt we'd be remiss. We got off the podcast and started talking about other uh, other issues outside of sports. We briefly touched on the national championship and all the commotion and criticism going on between uh, uh, Caitlin Clark and the the player from LSU and uh, the hypocrisy that's that's happening there. And then we found it particularly important the to touch on the Anthony Rendon situation. And and Paul brought this up and it's something that I've been wanting to touch on. And I don't want to go down the, the rabbit hole again of, you know, the, the social media comments, but you know, just from a, from a player perspective, I have my thoughts and I, I'm, I'm really interested to hear yeah. your thoughts on it, Paul. And for, back, for everybody, for everybody out there, a quick background. If you, if you've ever been to Oakland there, it's a, it's a bizarre stadium. I hope they blow it up one day, but in order to get from the visiting dugout, you have to basically go through a tunnel. It's, it's unlike, it's unlike anything in, in professional sports outside the NBA, where guys have to go, let it go through like a small walkway to get to the locker room. And right. when you walk through behind home plate under a covered awning, and then proceed to go up two flights of stairs to get back to the locker room. It's the only place like this in baseball. The issue with it is that with the particular seats, you're very close to the action. You're basically within reaching distance to, to reach out and, and, and potentially grab somebody or, or throw something while you're with the, the safety nets and being in a dugout. It's it, your players are not exposed as they are in Oakland. And so this particular fan, came down and shouted something as the players are going back to the locker room, which is it's part of the game. I understand, but Anthony Rendon called him out and then, uh, and then grabbed the, grab this fan uh, by the shirt. And he's coming under, under a lot of heat for, for acting out um, for who's in the wrong. And it's a very unique situation given the landscape of, of, of how fans can interact at uh, the Coliseum. But, I want I want to hear I want to hear your thoughts on this, Paul. So for me, first of all, Anthony Rendon, former Rice Owl, no big deal. But um, I, I'm going to have to assume you're talking about two teams that are in the same division that play each other a lot. There's a lot of potential variables here. Like maybe this guy has been around before. Maybe he's popped off and you know been had some derogatory comments in the past that, that you know obviously none of us would know about. Um, and I think it's kind of a classic situation where look we. Have, you know, we as fans, so to speak, you assume that, you know, these these players that you see on the field and on TV are just robots or like they're not even real kind of, so to speak, and they don't have real emotions. And you can say these kinds of things like barking through the fence, so to speak, and and they're not going to do anything or say anything. Well, and you and I both know, like if you get on top of some of these kind of players, like there is real emotion involved and they're big physical guys that, you know, that that's why they're good at what they do in, in a lot of ways. And so like, I don't know all the variables. I don't know the background. I don't know what kind of day Anthony Rendon was having, all of that stuff. That being said, like, I, I do think it's one of those situations where the fan probably was saying some outrageous, some egregious things, I would assume, because knowing, knowing Rendon the way and, and his demeanor and the way that he goes about his business, it's hard for me to believe that he's getting fired up in, in that manner about something that's probably not that big of a deal. Um, that being said, I, I don't know the entire situation. I just think that it's, I think there should be a little bit more, um, you know, I don't know if policing is the right way to say it. I, I think there should be a little bit better job of, of making sure that the fans kind of stay in their lane. And, and in particular, in that case, like you said, you highlighted how unique it is, how the proximity to the fans in terms of walking through them essentially to get out of the, out of the dugout. It's, it's just a very difficult thing. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that the fan was probably crossing the line. Is, is probably the, the best way to say it, but th th that's where I'm at. And, and granted, you and I are in some ways probably going to, you know, lean and, and give a little grace to the players because we probably have an idea of at times what they're subject to and, and things that get said, whether that's fair or not fair and, and that kind of stuff. So th that's kind of where I'm at on it. And I'm, I'm sure that there's going to be more that comes out about it. Rendon, obviously, it, they came out this morning and he suspended five games from the league. and Five games? For, yeah, five games for for whatever happened, and so I don't know. It, it's it, we'll see. But what's your feedback? Tell me your feedback. <clears throat> My feedback is this: we've seen this happen over the last couple years. Ever since COVID, it's been this weird, this weird like social dynamic where we see these these fans feel like they're entitled 
to say whatever they want from a distance, whether it be throwing popcorn, throwing soda, saying outrageous stuff to parents or whatever. Um, and it's, it's bizarre. And I think it's this weird, this weird, again, this weird social dynamic where we have this, this disconnect between being remote from somebody, knowing that you, you can hide and not have any type of repercussion to say whatever you want, whether it be social media or in person. And I can hundred percent guarantee you if the same situation was played out in public, if that guy saw Rendon at a restaurant, he is not saying whatever he said right. to Rendon hundred percent. <laughs> But it's this weird entitlement that fans feel because they're behind because they're high, behind a barrier that they're that it's it's simply they're just you know giving them a hard time or whatever. But when you say it deliberate within proximity, you're gonna be you're gonna be asking for something because there's no you know Jay and I have heard some wild shit coming from the outfield in Philly in Chicago. Most of us we've sure. laughed at, but a lot of it is just like, dude, you know, relax a little bit. But that's with, you know, 50 yards between me, you know, between us and, and the outfield. Sure. But that particular instance, I mean, he's right up on the rail and you have to know he can, he can reach up and snatch you. It's like going to a zoo. Like, you know, right. Right. that, that, that tiger is a tiger. Yeah. You can't get mad uh, at the tiger for tiger. He, he didn't, he just went tiger. Yeah. He just went tiger. Can't be mad at the tiger for going tiger. And he threw that little left-handed claw. Um, But it's, it's this weird thing where, Again, there is no repercussion because you automatically assume that they're not going to do it, but you know, you could get away with saying anything. And I trust you that you know him a lot better than I do. I'm sure he's come back to school and worked out. So you understand his demeanor, but I also understand like, you know, what he said, he had, he had, he had said, he had briefly gone into what this fan had said to him, which was over the line, especially within proximity. Like it's del- that is deliberate, like to your face. Sure. It's not like a, you know, like a raise your hand. Like my mom used to say with like racism back in the day, like you throw a rock, leave your hand up. Be like, yeah, that's right. I said it. Or you, you know, throw a rock and put your hand down and just be like, Oh, who, who is that? So, you know, with that, it's like, okay, if you want to, if you want to be like that, you know, go ahead. If you have anything else to say, say it to my face. But again, you know, it's going to go bad. It's going to go back and forth. And I don't necessarily say that the physical alteration, but confronting him is one thing. Uh, is one thing I, I I hope that the that the A's uh, do look into it uh, as well. Sure. I think that that needs to be that needs to be a discussion among the Oakland A's and uh, in uh, the observance of how their fans are are interacting or behaving at the game, especially when they're that close. They're, you're because you pay for those seats. I mean, it is Oakland; nobody's there, so justifying that money to say whatever you want is it's it's inappropriate. And like, I'm not the biggest LeBron fan, but I do know that. You know, these fans that are courtside, they feel like they're entitled that they can just say whatever they want. And there have been multiple instances in the NBA over the last couple of years where fans are just are popping off, saying real incredibly inappropriate stuff that, that has no place in sports. Like you come in there and enjoy the game, not to just berate players. And I understand fans disappointment, but it was again, it was an op- it was a opposing fan. It wouldn't have happened. It may be in Oakland. You know, I get it. You want your team to succeed. You have some disappointment. You like to display it, make your voice heard, whatever. But the opposing fan, like, don't don't come near me with that. Sometimes right. I'm not necessarily jumping, yeah. going full, uh, Ron Artest at the mouse at the palace. <laughs> I think that's an interesting thing. If you if you guys have ever seen the mouse at the palace, ESPN thirty for thirty, uh, incredibly interesting. But again, like that's the dynamic. You can't just be up there just doing whatever you want and not accept that there's going to be reco- repercussions. Yeah. Throwing popcorn, soda you know, at a player like that's, it's not your place. And it's just not what, that's not what sports are about. Five game suspension is real, man. That's a big deal. Um, it's steep. Yeah, man. Especially, yeah, I don't know. And using the Ron Artest as the example, I don't, I don't know Ron or anything like that, but I think we can agree that he had a little bit higher level of emotion that he operated with. And I think, I think in this, in this circumstance, I, I don't think Rendon quite, has that type of a reputation or background. So that's what leads me to believe again, that this fan was probably out of line, uh, you know, crossing the line, so to speak. I, I don't know, maybe we'll get some more um, dialogue on the backside of this to see exactly what was said, or if there was a background and, and all of those things, but either way, it's, it's unfortunate, but you know, part of, part of the game to a certain extent. To a certain extent, but it's all, it's also tr- becoming troubling, um, more familiar. And I think that's, I think that's, a, that's the issue. It's not necessarily where, you know, there's these upfront, you know, confrontations because again, 
Oakland Coliseum is a unique place in which the dynamics of the ballpark and how it's set up with players going back potentially puts you in these awkward situations. And then we saw that that happen. But I've personally been on the field uh, for the Adam Jones, the banana incident in San Francisco. I was there for the bottle that came out of uh, that, that came out of uh, the second deck in Toronto. Um, it's like there's there's no place for that, and and fans sure. have to understand that that that's not that's not acceptable behavior, and that you're you know from a uh, franchise standpoint there are going to be re- repercussions, but within that's prox- proximity, and you're being demeaning uh, in that manner, there should be. Uh, there should be repercussions too. And, you know, we can sit here and make the argument, okay, was grabbing them, making physical contact too far? What was said? What would justify any type of that? Is it something that as professional athletes, like you said, is Rendon super low key? Could he have just brushed it off? I think that's that's the biggest question is like, hey, you know, is it something that he could have just verbally said, hey, that's not appropriate, blah, 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 blah. You know, few other choice words. Or right. did it really have to go that far to give the guy, you know, that, you know, get that handful of handful of shirt. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see it's um, what, what exactly comes of it. Like I said, I'm, I'm curious. I haven't done much research on the backside, but we'll see. And then uh, I'm sure it's not the last instance we have of a fan player interaction. No, ab- it's absolutely not. It's not going to be the, it's not the first, it's certainly not going to be the last, but um, you know, I'm, you know, you've heard our take. So I would, I would love to open that up in the comments as well it's just you know if you guys have go watch the replay you know give us a little feedback uh love to hear your thoughts both a, a, as a fan but also you know trying to relatively as 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 you could possibly do uh the perspective from a professional athlete in that particular situation where you know they're up close and personal and how that you know how that dynamic should have played out um interested to hear your thoughts drop us drop us a comment uh on our on the youtube believe channel and uh we're looking forward to, to getting back and discussing some of the concerns that may come up on our next show on tuesday but paul thanks for part for part two and bringing this back up and again we're signing off again uh we hope you listen to this part because this is a, i mean for me this is particularly important uh you know as two former players so yeah all right dickie be good man <laughs> cheers